All right, folks, um, I'm out here in my composting system here. Uh, this is not a carbon-based composting bin. This is, I've got some solids and some liquids. I'm using mostly sawdust, but as you can see here, we're just over 100 and, about 115, just over 115. You could feel a little bit of heat coming out of here, but um, that's at the top here. The pile itself is, and we're looking at, this, this one here is probably about two by two, three and a half feet high. This one's four feet high. This one I activated probably six weeks ago now. I just ended up puffing up. I thought the thermophilic action was done, so I stuck a rod in there and I moved all that stuff around. Very easy to manage these teeny little piles. This heat, again, has been over 140 for six weeks easily and I thought it was done fluffed it up and it went back to 160 can you believe that or close to 160 about 150 right so I put some worm castings on top of it hoping that the cocoons would invade it but obviously it's just a little too hot right I'm, I'm glad I didn't put any worms in there it's dropping a little bit here let's see hot was. I got chicken bones, all kinds of stuff in here. Bacon. There we go. That spot is the sweet spot right there, which tweaks it up to over 140, which is amazing. This one is probably three feet high, two by two, right? Such a teeny little composting bin. No smell, no flies. Everything's contained because everything is covered. And so I'm very excited that the heat went back up again, giving me more weeks because I feel the hotter it goes. The longer it lasts, the more it softens up the material. And then when it finally ends the thermophilic stage, that's when I'm gonna add my reds and they will turn all that material into castings, or most of it. Look at how hot that got back up there again. See, it went down to almost into my orange, which is an active pile on its own right. It's hot right now. Some people say they don't want it that hot, but I love it that hot because it seems to work very well. And this pile was the second one that I did. This one's probably about four weeks old. And we're right there in the red as well. Let's take a look at this. So let's say these little dinky piles, let's say we can get them to go a couple weeks at a time, a couple months at a time, let's say, through the winter. Could we, is that the heating? You know how I've always been trying to get this heat outside the pile so we can heat up a small shed or a, an animal cage or keep a dog an outside dog warm something like that well this one I just activated a couple days ago and we are hot at 160 and you saw when I opened this lid the, the steam the, the uh, moisture that was on the lid this is still there, the moisture on the lid and it was hotter on the sides could this if you oh, that is very hot Trust me, folks, this is, you could feel the heat, like some serious heat. And look at how small this diameter is. So you know this heat is here. So most of this stuff is baking in here. And of course, if I wanted to move it around, which I really shouldn't because it's going so good, but I'm gonna mess with it a little bit. People ask me anyway, Mark, how do you turn your pile? Well, it's not a matter of turning it. It's just a matter of put, poking a rod in there. Everything was minced. I'm just moving around like if I wanted to get these corners in I just go like this and move it around one day I'm gonna get one of those um the those uh compost uh, uh devices that you screw it down in there and you pull it up and it all comes up and then you can move it around that way but this works pretty darn good all right so if this pile is any indication of this little dinky pile, this three by two by two, right? If it's any indication like that, it's going on six weeks. Folks, a couple of these piles in a greenhouse, you might be able to get that heat you need to start your stuff in the, um, early in the season, especially for us who live in New England, right? So I start on that pile, then I'm gonna go to this pile, then this pile, let me tell you something, folks. It's so much easier to manage little piles like this. So for the average homeowner who's just doing their own stuff, 
This is these are just cages that I get. A good one that I think I showed in the videos. I got a couple dog cages down here, down over here that have cardboard that's gonna line it. I line it with cardboard like this. This one I'm working on now. I get some some um, nitrogen in the form of house food, and then I get some sawdust over there, and then I just threw some cardboard, ripped up cardboard there. I'll put some more nitrogen down there, top it with cover it with a carbon, which I'm using sawdust for now because all my leaves are. Uh, we're spraying in August, so I don't have much carbon, so I'm using sawdust that I, mean, I get freely on Facebook. So I got a ton of that. So that's that's great. So that's, I'm, I'm kind of excited about this. I think there's possibility. Granted, it's, and also I'm using liquid slurry as well. So I'm wetting this pile down really good with some liquid slurry from my house composting that I've been uh, I, I got my worm farm outside now. I'm gonna start doing, I have the room to do it outside. So for how many years, nine years, I've been doing my fermenting system. I don't have the um, drainage system set up because I just moved it. I went from the shed, and then I went to um, out back here, and I'm gonna hopefully see if I can't make it through the winter somehow with it like this. I just emptied, these are all freshly packed. From now on, what I do is I do a massive, uh, I don't date it anymore. I just do every, let's say every uh, four or five, six weeks. Like um, this is all done. Today is August what fifth. So I'll date all these. I'll open all these September fifth or sixth. This is that week somehow. So you should see this stuff, and we'll talk about that. The stuff I'm packing and feeding these red wigglers that are creating a lot more cocoons. It's a heck of a lot different the way I pack them these days so i'm still excited about this system again when this is when this thermophilic stage is done i'm going to add a ton of reds which i have a, a ton of reds in here right now um let me give you a sense of what we got going on here i already took out a ton of them there's a ton in here and each time i'm done i have a few pounds of i don't know i should get more scientifically minded about it all but I have a few pounds of reds that I start new buckets. So this, a lot of these stuff is all old material that I stuff back in that hasn't quite finished. This is the castings. And then I'll, I'll put it into this bin, which is the nursery. So I can have these cocoons hatch. And um, now this stuff from now on, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna experiment with putting it on, onto this uh, new composting system that I have set up. So little bins. Uh, I'm gonna close right here. I'm on almost eight minutes, and hopefully I could just do this without editing it. But um, uh, I'm very excited about these little teeny bins. I mean, I thought you had to have girth. So any comments on that? I thought you. Had, I thought the way I got this heat, this crazy heat, folks. Look, I just um, uh, freshed it up. I'm over 160, folks. I've never had that kind of heat with my big um, uh, four by four, three feet high. So this is exciting. This heat that's coming out of here. Let's say you put it, let's say it's in the greenhouse. You put this on top of it. And there's no smell. There's like a little bit of a, there's a little bit of a, um, it's not a gross smell. It's kind of like a, a compost heated smell. So let's say you're in the greenhouse and you have these, a bunch of these all around, maybe a line up like this all around the wall of your greenhouse. And they're all toasty hot like this. Is that how we can heat these things we're trying to heat, right? The, these greenhouses and these rabbit hutches and these um, chicken coops and all the stuff we, as urban farmers, need to, uh, to, to have a successful garden. So I'm excited about that. I've never had this kind of heat. Maybe once a few years ago when I was pouring that liquid slurry over a leaf pile, but... I don't know if it's the sawdust that I'm using. You can see a little bit right here. Got a hole in that. But this cardboard, of course, I, I, I as I was saying, I, um, I line it with cardboard like this. The tape comes off easier once it's moist, so I don't want to take the, take the time to take the tape off. I, I eventually get at it, so that does not get composted with it. This cardboard that's around here will go into another bin when it's finished. I think I'm gonna have compost out of these, these here in a very short time. <clears throat> Especially if this heat is lasting this long, two months at a time, three months at a time, folks. If it's if it's over 140, we're talking about um, you know possibly keeping our even our worms warm somehow. Figuring out how to use these to keep our worms warm. I don't know how I'll do it with 
with these guys here. But maybe I'll just lighten up on all these worms when it comes time for, let's say, November is when it really starts to really, really get cold. Maybe I'll start uh, putting these, the worms that are in here, in here. I don't know what I'm going to do. I know I don't want these guys to freeze, and I know I want them to be active all the time. So we'll see. Time will tell. Um, I'm at, I'm at um, what is it, 32 right now. So uh, I'm probably going to go another layer up here. So we're going to go to um, uh, 64, right? 32 and 32, 64. <laughs> so that's that. And I'm working on, this is an old trailer that I have that I've been... Uh, I had quail in here at one time, but I don't. I no longer have that. This is my my Ginny is in here. Uh, this is called a composting casket, where um, I'm not. I didn't do the thermophilic out. I, I put her in a nice soil mix, soft soil mix, where she's laying in there, and hopefully Mother Nature will take care of her. Six months, and I'll open this one up. I'm going to give it a lot of plenty of time. I'm going to add some more red wigglers to it. It's doing very good uh, from the top of it, but there, look, notice this, it's a hot day out. There's nothing that knows Jenny is in there because it's all about cover. And so what I'm going to do with her, all this soil, this rich soil that Jenny's going to be a part of, I'm going to plant something very special for her. To think about her. Good, great dog. Anyway, um, that's how that's my compost is working here. Exciting. I love making it. I love turning all this so-called organic waste into rich soil and then growing vertically with it. This is the secret, folks, of how we are going to manage the future, how we're going to teach people how to grow